Nice. Got my notes here and everything for a few <laughs> things that you wanted to cover. I, I, I think I've got your, sure. quest, your questions here somewhere. Yeah, I've got them as well as my notes. Mind, yeah. body, soul, check. It's Joe Dash again in the building. I'm with the herbalist in the hood, Miss Jacobs. How are you doing? I am great. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm great. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I really like that name, Herbalist in the Hood. <laughs> I really like it. It's proper, like, it's, it's air catching, shall we say. It came about by total accident. I was just um, talking to a friend of mine because mm -hmm. I had to move back home, take care of my parents. Mm -hmm. And so I moved back home and I was just chatting to my, to, to my friend in that and it just came out and I said, yeah, you know, I've got these people that like, they're like knocking on my door. They're not booking appointments or nothing. You know, they're going on like I'm the herbalist in the hood. <laughs> and then we both went like this. <gasps> it's like, bingo. <laughs> yeah. And it was born from there. I said, oh my God, I love it. I love that name. So. No, it is. It is. Me. It works. It works. It works it in every way possible. It does. So it does. Jen, um, I mean, you're the herbalist in the hood. So today we're going to talk about a bunch of things about herbs why they work, why they don't work, so people can understand some of the myths and, and stuff they've seen on social media. Okay. Um, you know, for people that don't know, in fact, I met Jen on my program, mm -hmm. um, the 30-day challenge that I run um, every month. And she she does herbal, her, uh, she's into herbalism. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me just check out what's going on. These times I didn't even know she was read remedies at all. And I was just like, okay, great. And we had a phenomenal conversations. And right there and then I knew, I'm like, oh, Jen's a big deal. She's awesome. She's going to do, she's going to take this herbal thing to a whole new level. So I was like, hey, well, let me invest now. So when she's, when she's up, she don't forget about me. Um, so Jen, tell us some more about you. Where are you from culturally? Where's your parents from? Where did you grow up, man? Let people get uh, to know you. Parents are from Jamaica. Both of them from Jamaica. Okay. Um, and I grew up in uh, White City, White City Estate, okay. in Shepherd's Bush. Okay. And so that's basically, like, I mean, that's almost London. And um, I left Shepherd's Bush around the age of 19, um, you know, and I just moved around London. Yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of my herbal knowledge, I would say, right. came from my mum. Okay. My mom always had, you know, jars upon jars on the kitchen windowsill. You knew there for some something good in our bodies because obviously that's what mommy will give, but we oh, didn't yeah. know what it was. Really yeah, about. you know, you got an ache, you got a tummy ache, you got a headache, and you got all this. You had all the jars for anything. Jars. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's all these jars, and they never had labels on them. Well, she just and knew. They, she knew there were barks leaves twigs all kinds of stuff and i used to watch her make them she used to use alcohol and water and all sorts of stuff so you've got anything wrong with you especially when it's up ladies at that time of the month right. it hurt me i go to my mom right. she'll reach for something give it to me it tastes vile <laughs> absolutely disgusting but it did the job hey and whatever it takes to get the job done listen mother nature at its best and right. uh, growing up we never went to the doctor's my family and I very, okay. very rarely went to the doctors, not for everyday things. Obviously, if you had an accident or of course, yeah, something severe, obviously, yeah, broken you go to bones and right. stitches, right? You go to the hospital, yeah, but for, for sure, everyday for sure. childhood stuff, never went to the doctors. My mom dealt with everything. And how did she get the information? Like, what was her upbringing like? If you know anything about she it, she was in, she came over here when she was, I think, 40. Oh, she came okay, over sure. here, late 30s, 40. But she, um, from what I could get from her, she learned anything to do with herbs from the ladies in the family, from the mom, from her mom, and from the women in the family. Okay, so this but is passed she, on. And it, yeah, it's not something that you sit there and take a book out and take notes. You follow them around. You watch okay. what they do. Um, you watch how much, because there's right. sometimes people want to know the dosage, just like in medicine, in, in allopathic medicine, which is pharmaceutical right. medicine. They want to know well, how much doses, how much milligrams of the herb. And, um, you know, you've got to work that out. I couldn't ask my mom, well, how much do I put in that? She would say, well, you put a bit of this. 
What's a bit? How do you measure a bit? A bit. Like, I can't, I can't measure a bit. What, 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 I know. What a bit is not a numerical it number. It was really what infuriating. Is a bit? Yeah, like, well, what's a bit? What do you mean? Well, you just put a drop of this and a drop of that, and then you put a little bit of it, and I'm all, oh, but... We don't measure crazy. though. It's the European no. construct to measure. We don't measure. Even yeah. back home when we cook, we don't measure. We measure yeah. by eyes what we say. Yeah. We just we know how it's supposed to smell when it's yeah. done. We know how it's supposed to look. Yeah. We know the texture, taste. We yeah. just knew with zero measuring. Measuring is a Eurocentric thing. Yeah. So what? When did you start really studying herbal uh, herbalism in kind of like a more professional way? How was that journey, and what led you up to that journey? Should I say? Um. Back in about 2009, mm -hmm. us ladies, um, every three years or so, we have to go for a procedure called a smear. Yes, a smear test. I'm aware. And that's mm -hmm. to see if you've got cancerous cells on your cervix. Right. And so one of my um, tests came back that there were cancerous cells on my cervix. This was about 2009. And so I had okay. to, and you would have your smear test every three years. When that happens, you have to have a smear test every six months so that they can monitor the yeah, cells. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was pretty scared and shook up here that yeah, you know, for sure. I've got for the, sure. The, the, uh, you know, the, there was only a little, and it was so one is enough to scare you, to be honest. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> if they said one cell was there <laughs> acting up, you'd be like, what? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, like I, one cell acting up is like what is is about to be what? I yeah, was shook. Course. I was shook. I was so scared, and yeah. it got to a point where I didn't even believe them. So I said to them, I want to see for myself. So they moved, <laughs> they moved the screen out of the way. Yeah, I was kicking up a fuss. It's my body, right? And I'm worried. I'm like, like, I don't believe that. Let me see what you look looking yeah, at. Your I cells want to see what's going on. <laughs> so when they showed me, oh my God, I saw it. Because they you have to, you have yeah, to have yeah, a special sure. kind of um, a procedure. I can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to butcher it. Yeah. But, but basically, <laughs> they have to insert a camera and I could see it and tears were in my eyes i was like oh my god oh, how did this happen you know so um i had to go for three more so it went on for 18 months and they could see that the cells were growing in number uh, and they said that you know the next time you come back if these cells are still here and they're growing in number because they're, they're, they're cancerous cells right. we're gonna have to cut we're gonna have to operate and i wow. said um you're not no you're not touching me so I went away. Um, the first thing I did, I just threw myself into some deep, deep research about herbs for cancer and, you know, herbs for uh, the cervix, the, 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 the reproductive, um, the reproductive um, organs. And I went and bought a bullet and I started to go all green. Everything was green. Green okay. smoothies. I stopped eating meat. I wasn't a red meat eater. I like chicken and some fish. Um, the only chicken I did eat was organic because I read about the steroids and the antibiotics in meat. And I'm thinking, well, why are you putting antibiotics in meat? Antibiotics is when you have an infection. So, duh, the animal's got an infection. You pump it full of, you know, steroids and antibiotics and you sell it to us. So I, I only had um, organic meat, but most of the time, 90% of the time, I was alkaline and green. And I did that for six months. So I went back to the hospital, had another... Um, of the procedure gone the woman called in her boss must be some consultant and they were talking and talking and talking then they called in another guy another clinical guy the three of them were talking then trying they to crack their brain in. yeah and they said uh miss jacobs um what have you done what did you do did you do anything because we can't see the cells the cells have gone and i once again i wanted to see for myself gone Clear. I would say that I prayed. That's what I did. I didn't tell you that's nothing. Said, that's exactly I what I said, Joe. You read my mind. I, I, I didn't tell them about her because they're very <laughs> I tell you much against nothing. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. So I, I said, you know what? All I did was pray. Yeah, I prayed. And that's it. They just looked at me like mm. it was good. And I jumped off that couch and I skipped all the way home. <laughs> I was so happy. I'm I'm <laughs> at that point, I had to go deeper because when I went to my mom to speak to her about right. it, bless her, she could only give me what she knew. Me, she of course, me of course. A ton. She taught me a lot. So right, she could right. only give me what 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 she knew. I was wanting to know why, mommy, why, why does it work on that part of the body? Why yeah, do you, why? I take this? Why does my tummy ache go away? Why does my headache go away? She doesn't know. 
right? But she, she just knows the tradition. She would it. just say, yeah. "Oh, just go and go sit down, move." And, you know, <laughs> you, can't ask, ask, you can't ask older people too many questions. You no. want to stress them out. <laughs> no, so uh, it bugged me. It bugged me. It bugged me for years and years. It bugged me. I wanted to know. I spoke to other herbalists. I went on courses. I spoke to so much people, but nobody could actually give me. They couldn't fulfill my hunger. They couldn't satisfy my hunger for those questions. And it was, where are we now? We're in 21, 20, 19, 18, around 18, 2018. Right. Um, I, I just bumped into this, this video um, to do with herbalism, you know, and I started to watch it. And it was for an online course in America. And the guy, the teacher answered two of my questions. And that just blew me away. Right. And the course was very expensive, um, but I found the money. Yeah. I just was so determined. I said, because mm. that, that, that um, saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yes. So apt and yes. so precise, because yeah, I was that ready. Is true. I was I so ready. True. And nobody could, nobody could satisfy my, my, my hunger. Yeah. You had questions. questions. It's the, it's the it. inner scientist in you. You had questions yeah, and it, it needed it. to be answered. Yeah. yeah and I course. said, I don't, it, it cost a bit, but I got the money. I borrowed from here and there because I had to go on this guy's course. Right, right. And this is going into year three and he does not fail to amaze me every mm. single time. It's tough. It really is. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm scientific, even though some people say you are, Jay. And I'm like, okay. But when it comes to anatomy and physiology, we, I had to study that. I got to study every single organ of the body. You get tested. Every module you get, you get tested. And then at the end of that, we have our collective exam. Right. So, but it's tough. It really is a tough journey, but it's enjoyable. It's satisfying. It's fulfilling. Absolutely. And part of that, you have to have... Uh, you have to be practicing. You cannot be a theorist. Yeah, you yeah. Be a herbalist no. and a theorist. <laughs> no. So he said you have to go out and get clients. And I'm like, oh, okay. He goes, you, you, friends, family, whoever, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. You've got to find people yeah. to work on. You know, just some simple stuff, nothing deep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, I, I had to find people to work on. I had to find case studies. I had to find women and men because there's herbs there's herbs for everyone but there are some herbs that are mainly for women and reproductive organs some herbs mainly for the male reproductive organs so i had to kind of get a collective of people and i wasn't sure i wasn't sure because there's a lot of sick people out there no there, no there is there is this is why the, the work we all do is very necessary because we we are trying to provide an alternative for the people yeah. so they can find a safe place where they can you know heal naturally yeah. which is what we all tap into yeah. um let's tackle the first topic mm -hmm. what does it what does herbalism mean to you and what does it mean to be a herbalist herbalism is walking the plant path mm. um I is that feel... different from being a botanist what would be the difference between a botanist and a herbalist? A botanist? You know what? I don't even I don't even know what a botanist is. Stud, someone that studies plants and the nature of plants and how they move and affect their environment and people. Okay. I would think it is a bit different to a botanist because uh, as a herbalist, we study how plants affect the constitution and the ecology of the body. Okay. Of a okay. person. All right, uh, so herbalist is more deals with yeah. how herbs, the relationship between man and herb, whereas yes. botanist just studies yeah. the, the dynamics of all plants and yeah. how and their, their biology is. Gotcha. Yeah, we gotcha. study the plants and how the plants affect the ecology of the body. Of the body, right. It, it, to do with sickness and, you know, certain... That's a good way to uh, describe it for herbalism, yeah. yeah that, that makes sense on the, on the dot, yeah. like just studying how the plants um, interact with the constitution of the body. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, that's very important. A, a lot of times in our society, what we do is... I've heard a lot of things from people where they'll tell me like, Joe, you know, if you just drink, just drink this herb, you clear out everything in your system, everything, everything clear out, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, bruh. You don't even know me. You don't know what my body's like. You don't even know what I'm allergic to. You have no idea. So I want to dive into some of the myths about herbs. What is some common misunderstanding that we should just clear up for people? What's some common misunderstanding about um, herbs? What is it not going to do that you think it's going to do? Or how does it work that you think it's going to work, but it's not really how it works? 
Uh, I think one of them that really bugs me sometimes is that they think that herbs is exactly like allopathic medicine. Um, when I say allopathic medicine, I'm talking about pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical and, stuff, and right. chemical drugs. They think it's like that. I could have somebody come to me and, and, and they'll come to me with a heart issue and right. I'll give them a particular, um, after speaking to them, I give them a particular herb. And the first thing they'll ask me is how quick is it going to work? And this particular herb is called hawthorn. Mm. And when I say to them, um, I don't know, they, they look at me like I'm crazy. I said, because everybody has a unique constitution and each herb doesn't, um, it doesn't affect all bodies the same because all bodies are not the same. Right. Hawthorn can take up to six weeks before you even know or feel an effect of it. Mm. It's a herb that has an accumulative action, which means it takes, it's like a creeper. It, yeah, takes, it takes time Time to get mm -hmm. herbs. One thing with herbs, they are respectful. They are highly intelligent. And when I say they're respectful, they don't come into your body like a pharmaceutical drug and nuke everything. Yeah. They almost knock on the door. Mm -hmm. They ask to come in and they go to their place of business. They're yeah. not going to trouble anything else. Pharmaceutical drugs, if you've got a really bad headache, bad migraine, and you take a, 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 a tablet, mm -hmm. you think it's just going to your head. It isn't. It kills all the nerve cells one yeah, time. So that's why they tell you it deals with migraines, toothaches, this, yeah. that, all that, yeah. because, because it's it just nuking the whole everything. body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they might as well add finger pains, toe, toe pains. Everything. They might as well add navel everything. pains, air pains. You have no feeling. Yeah, exactly. And so you think, Oh, it's worked. I haven't got a headache. I'm better and better. Um, but it happens it, quick. You know, they tell you express it happens in 10 very minutes quickly. in five minutes. It'll, yeah. you, you'll, you know, cure yeah. whatever ailment of pain you have. Yeah, yeah, that's what they promise. Yeah. And um, herbs don't do that. Herbs will come in. Process. They will eliminate the pain. Um, but you have to sort of, you can take the pain, uh, sorry, the, the, the pain killing herb right there and then, but it won't nuke everything. It, it, it's almost like an exocet missile. They know where they're going. Right, right. They know the body very well because yeah. herbs have been here longer than man. Mm. And so the herbs, once they go in the body, the body's like, oh, where you been? Yeah, I seen you in a minute. I seen you in forever, <laughs> I seen you in like a millennium. You know? yeah. <laughs> and so it takes a bit of time to get to where it needs to get because the body and the herbs are having a conversation. Man, True. out here is tough, bro. Nice. You know? <laughs> And they're talking and they're talking and they're going along this plant path inside our bodies. And then it lays down the foundation for that type of illness or condition or whatever the issue may be. Some herbs can right. act instantly. Mm. Some can. Like what? Give and us some examples. Which ones are more instant? Like, um, I'll give you cayenne pepper. Okay. Right? Cayenne pepper is a miraculous herb to do with the heart. And in herbalism, they've got this thing called the doctrine of signatures. Mm. Doctrine of signatures basically means back way, 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 way back. They would match a herb if it looked like the body. Oh, like, okay. If it looked like the liver, then that's for the liver. If it looked like a heart, beans. it's for Kidney the heart. beans actually look like a kidney. That's yeah, yeah. where they get the name from. Kidney beans, so yeah, you've sure. got herbs that look like, like bladder rack yeah. sometimes looks like um, uh, a part of the, I think it's the thyroid, they said. If you pick it up and really examine it, it looks similar to the thyroid because the thyroid is in the shape of a butterfly. Yes, almost. yes, yes. Right on here. both sides. Yeah. And bladder rack looks like it. So therefore they think, okay, bladder rack looks like it. So bladder rack is for the thyroid, which it is, it's iodine. Okay. So, um, okay. Get, oh God, I've lost my place. Joe. <laughs> You're going deep. You're going deep. You were lost I'm, in the, in the abyss I'm real so quick. Deep so I'm basically just... we we're talking about how some herbs look like the thing that they're trying to cure. So if it, it looks like a heart shape, it looks like a thyroid shape, it's a butterfly. Yeah. Cayenne. Cool. Cayenne is red like the blood, right? The mm. heart pumps the blood. Yes. So they think, okay, cayenne is going to work for the blood. Now it actually does. Now, one of the teachers uh, gave us a story that he was at a conference and somebody had a heart attack. He had cayenne pepper on him. He put the cayenne pepper in the person's mouth. Heart attack stopped immediately. That was for that person, though, surely. It couldn't be, that couldn't work in every scenario. Ah, I don't know. Based on our constitution being different based and on our people. Uh, but you caught a good one with that one. A heart yeah. attack is a heart attack, regardless of your constitution. 
a heart attack is a heart attack. It's still stopping the blood. Um, there's something stopping the blood mm -hmm. and you've got to unblock whatever it is that's stopping the blood from flowing. Right. And cayenne pepper does that. If you've got a headache, um, use cayenne pepper in water. Put your feet in, in, a, in a bowl of, of, of warm water with cayenne pepper. And what it does, it draws the blood down to the feet and it relieves the headache. Now, that's not going to be for everyone. Um, but for a lot of people, especially there's a certain type of people that do suffer with a lot of headache. Okay. And that will work for them. Okay. So, um, so you've got KN, then you've got, oh my gosh, what's another one? Uh, it is some herbs um, that will work for everyone though. Is there any herbs that will just You've got be... basic herbs. Yeah. Le herbs like, let's say, um, a simple one like chamomile. Chamomile will work for a lot of people. It's very soothing. Lavender is is a regular herb that I find works for everyone. Seriously, I, I haven't met a person. Yeah, lavender is a sedative. Um, it's a sedative, meaning it sedates the nerves, and mm. it just has an amazing way of putting people to sleep. And I haven't mm. met anyone. I personally haven't met anyone that it hasn't worked for. If if I put if I I'm trying it wrong. How's, what's the best way to try it? I'm definitely trying it wrong. Um. What I do, I yeah. have a gift. There was a gift that I got from a friend of mine. She bought me like a little cushion and it had a bottle of, of um, lavender. So what you do, you put drops of lavender on this little cushion and you inhale it. You can put it on a handkerchief and you inhale it. So when I want to go to bed, if I'm having a hard time falling asleep, I'll add a bit of lavender on it and I start inhaling it. I just hold it under okay, my nose. Okay. Yeah. I like that. And before I know it, uh, like a light. I'm gone. I'm out. Oh, okay. Because I like uh, it I, when we put it in the diffuser. Yeah. But I find it very strong as a smell. You but I love much. it when it's in the diffuser. Yeah. If 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 it's too strong, it's too much. Oh, okay. So it's obviously it, I know I'm yeah, not doing it right. Too, okay, if, cool. Anything, any one of those essential oils. Maybe, maybe I just drop. need a drop rather than two, three drops. Maybe the drop maybe is what I need. Because I love it in the diffuser. When it's in the diffuser, I love how the room smells. I'm like, oh yeah. my god, I love how it smells. But, but when look I put how it, you but look how you reacted just then. Yeah, I love how it smells. When you it's look relaxed. Thing. You just yeah, went, yeah, oh my God, I just love it. Yeah, it does. Like now, I know it definitely works. I was thinking for myself, like, maybe I'm, I need this, there's a, the way I use it is where I'm probably just going wrong because I was like, when it's in the diffuser, I know for a fact it's calm. It makes the whole room yeah. calm. When I put it on a drop of something, I find it very overpowering. It's so I'm just like, strong. oh, it works for me in the diffuser. But yeah. okay, I always say lavender is yeah. definitely one of the top favorites. Water, and yeah. so the water's going to act like a carrier and it's going to diffuse it. That's why it's called a diffuser. diffuser. It's going to okay. diffuse it. It's going right. to send it out into the yeah. room. Okay. And it's good for children that are um, over anxious, really over anxious sort of children. When I was teaching um, yoga to children that had ADHD, Okay, okay. I would have a little diffuser in the room and I would have it diffusing lavender. Okay. And it did it did serve a good purpose because it did calm them down. That's good. So yeah. And I would think I I don't know, I just haven't met anyone that it hasn't worked for. No, you can even you're right, drink it. Right. I it definitely works for me. So I know you that. Drink it. It's yeah. just the way I use it. I was like, okay, you know what? It works in diffuser. Maybe I put too much on the thing. But you're right. There's some herbs that kind of work. What about um Looking at, let's say, for example, um, mo taking like modern medicine and herbs, that relationship. Some people feel like you have to cut one out and get the other. Mm. But is there any place where you would suggest to a client to use both at the same time? Can they coexist in the same constitution at the same time? Yeah, we need we need both. Remember, it's even though we're looking at it and it's chemicals and everything, it's still from the earth. Okay. Um, and, and the modern medicine, uh, pharmaceutical medicine is called allopathic medicine. That's what it's right. called. Yeah. And yep, it I still that. has its place because um, all drugs used to be extracts from herbs. Yep. And so when, when they realized that they could now synthesize them in the laboratory, um, they now do that but they used to come from herbs, but of course they can work side by side. I don't know if they can work, well, well, for instance, if I've got a client and they're on medication and they're coming to me because they wanna come off their medication, it is not my place to tell anybody to come off the medication. They have to go to their doctor for that. But what I find is if they're taking a particular herb, let's say for blood pressure, I find the more that they're taking a particular herb for blood pressure, 
the less they need their medication. Okay. Their medication goes down, it goes down, the more, and then they increase the herb. And not just the herb, it's not, a one, it's not just a one thing. They've got to look at their lifestyle. They've got to look at their diet. Once they implement all three, diet, lifestyle, and the herb, um, they have found that they need the medication less. Okay. And less. And less. Then they go and get their, their um, blood pressure taken, and their blood pressure's coming down. So the doctor will naturally lessen the medication. Okay, yeah, because they've seen that yeah. it's regulating itself bit yeah. by bit. And now it's starting to regulate itself. Okay. And Makes sense. Um, I, I definitely think they do have a place, both have a place in society. Because if I, like I say to my clients, if I were to walk out and got hit down by a bus and I've got a gashing, gaping wound, I'm not going to a herbalist. I'm going, going to, to go to a &E, bro. Stop playing. I'm going to get pumped full you of drugs death. so I don't get no infections. <laughs> I'm going to get them to stitch me up. For sure. Put, put a cast on or whatever it is I need to, to, to keep that wound nice and clean. Then when I get home, I'm going to take my own herbal remedies to strengthen my leg, to, to astringents to join back the skin. I'm going to take demulsants to moisturize back the skin internally and externally. Right, right. Okay. And that's well, generally that what I would do. So, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. We shouldn't just negate one thing over the other. We have to learn how to make both of them coexist. So yeah. what would be your advice to people that want to come off medication? Would that be the advice? It's just to keep taking the herbs? I would say that they would... A lot of people want to come off medication. I get that all the time. They need to... They need to understand that coming off medication has to be done incrementally, it has to be done gradually, gradually, gradually. Yeah, you can't just, just jump out the window. You can't just stop taking it because mm. it's it. What it's doing is actually medicating whatever that symptom is. So if you can find um, the herb for that symptom, and you've got to have a big window between the two. So if you take your medication at twelve in the afternoon, you have the herbs around three, four o'clock. Got to have a big window. Then. Okay. I would have to go and get a book, which is called a herb and drug um, interaction book and look mm. for the contraindications. Mm. If somebody's on metformin, I have to look and see what herbs can um, be taken whilst this person is on metformin. Let, let's say for diabetes, for instance. Right. Um, I have to find out what herbs can work with it. What are the contraindications? And you have to have a window, a three hour window where you take your medication, then you wait the three hours, then right. you take your herbs. Okay, um, okay. There's a and window. If they want to come off medication, for sure. yeah. If you want to come off medication, you have to do it gradually. You have to wean it down, wean it down, wean it down, and then wean yourself off completely. Right. Um, and, and at the same time, you have to get this, um, you have to get the herb that's going to work for whatever your condition is and let your doctor know. Remember, your doctor works for you. He, right. you do not work for him. Your doctor doesn't, he, he can say to you, oh, I advise you to do this, but the final result and decision is yours. Not of course, the yeah, they can't force you to do doctors, anything. Yeah, they bully people. They try to bully me so much times into doing and taking things. And I'm like, no, no, I don't need that. I'm not taking that, you know? And mm. if you go in my doctor's surgery, my doctor's file is about that big. If that, some people's files are massive, Yeah. you know? because you constantly keep going to the doctors for these medications and what the medications are doing, they are suppressing symptoms. That's it. They do not deal with the actual issue, the root cause. So find the root cause, find the herb that can work for the root cause, work with your doctor, no matter what he says, tell him, okay, I hear you doctor, I hear what you're saying, but my decision is, this is what I want to do. Right. And, if you, and if the doctor keeps going on about it, find another doctor. It's that simple. Yeah, there are doctors out there that work that work alongside herbs. And yeah, they are, man. Think, I've met some. This, that's yeah, definitely true. There's some, some doctors that really do work around herbs. Yeah. And, you know, because, you know, our community is very kind of like standoffish from modern medicine. They don't even want to go to yeah. the doctor. They don't want to do that. How do we get them to understand how to use both? Because obviously herbalism is a massive part of who we are as, as a people. And, yeah. you know, it's been in our culture for since the beginning of time yeah but what what do you think you know contributes to just this way of thinking where we just don't want to deal with the hospital you know what i mean what's what's causing that and how do we kind of manage that if we're going to talk to people it's tough because it's about trust and because okay. as, as a as a culture of people we've been let down so much we have very little trust but then again saying that there's also a section of our community that has full trust in the medical um, world 
So you get the two different yeah. demographics of people, those who trust and those who don't. And I would say that in terms of needing tests done, yeah. because as a herbalist, I can't afford the machinery that the doctors have. Right. You know, certain things you need to go and get checked. Blood, yeah, blood tests, test, all these kind of things. A blood test on the private is 200 pounds. Yeah. Straight. And I don't, I don't see anybody who's going to fork out 200 pounds to get a private blood, blood, blood test. <laughs> Unless, you have, a condition. Unless you have a known condition. Yeah. The thing is, you have to have an element of responsibility in looking up what is wrong with your body. The doctor says you've got diabetes. A lot of people come to me for diabetes. They haven't got a clue what it is. They haven't got a clue what it's about. What what They just listen to what the doctor says and go by what the doctor says. And I said, have you done any independent research? Have you done anything at all on it? No, no. So they don't know. And a lot True. of the times, there's so many herbs out there for diabetes. Um, mm. And they don't know that. And they don't trust the doctor. They don't know what to do. They're stuck in this kind of between a rock and a hard place. And my, my thing is always to find out for yourself. Yeah, I would say for sure. that come to me, this herb works for blah, blah, blah. But please go and do your research. Right. Absolutely, some of them don't absolutely. want to. Some of them trust me. No, nope, no, I trust you. I know you know what you're talking about. I've used X, Y, Z, and it done what you said it would do. I trust you. But I still like people to have some kind of knowledge of their own, to just even read something, find something about whatever you're on, especially your, your medication. Some medications that you take are causing the very issues that you're having. Yeah, for sure. The, the if you read the side effects of a lot of medication, you're like, wow. Yeah. Like, what's the point? You know yeah. what I mean? It's I had like, a lady. Yeah. And what did she took? She took one uh, medication, then she had to take another one. I said, well, what's the other one for? She goes, oh, because the first medication causes <laughs> issues to my stomach lining, so I have to take that one. Then, the, then she took a third one because the one for the stomach lining, lining gave her, it's such issues a, to do with the kidneys. It's such a ridiculous circus. And it just goes circus. on and on and on. It's just a, it's such a ridiculous circus. Because yeah. in, in any other situation, if you told someone, hey, I'm going to give you a glass of water, but side effects are you might die from parasites, you might have diarrhea, you might have... You're not going to drink the water. You, you don't even want to drink the water. You're like, you know what? I'm not even that thirsty. No. But then if you drink the water and you do get parasites, I've got another liquid yeah. for the parasites. Then you drink that yeah. parasite yeah. and then it's giving you a headache. I've got another yeah. liquid to kill. It's like, bro, yeah. where, does it, where does it end for the yeah. most part? It's, it's just like a, a, a snowball. It never ends. It's just one row of medication sitting on your, on your chest of drawers and it's just one thing after the other. So the body becomes so overly medicated that you're just constantly in a state of sickness. Yeah, it's true. Because there's no health in medicine. No. There is no health there. You know what I'm saying? Only nature can provide health. Yeah. There's no health in medicine. No, no. So in medicine, it. it's disease management. Okay, there's a difference. All right, they cool. Manage let's, let's, let's the label disease. It. They manage the symptoms. In, in fact, they manage the effect of the disease. Not even the actual cause. Like you said that one time yeah. we were talking, they're like, they even check the cause. They're just managing the symptoms of the disease even. Yeah. So they don't even get to the cause of the disease, whether it be diarrhea, they genetic, related, whatever it is. They just patch you up and say, listen, this will help you carry on with your life and throw you back out there. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's why a lot of the towns are probably don't really care too much for it in that kind of sense. Wow. And what about when it comes to preserving herbs, right? Dr. Sami said we should not put herbs in alcohol. What's your thoughts on it? I do. <laughs> so which herbs, which um, herbs, and how do you know which herb, herbs is for alcohol and which one is for you? You um, have to water? study it. You learn it on the course. Oh, okay, you just you learn, learn because well. certain herbs... Um, Certain herbs, the extracts, because you want the chemical compounds, yes. um, the flavonoids, the alkanoids, the tannins, all of those chemical compounds, you, you need them for certain conditions. So some herbs are so bitter that nobody's going to drink it. And there's no point me making a tea that nobody's going to drink. So if I make it into a tincture, which is a very small um, bottle, a very powerful um, bottle full of herbs that is made from grain alcohol, which is vodka. Okay. And what I do, once I've made that, that tincture, I mean, I don't drink alcohol. I, I don't drink, never, uh, I just don't drink it at all. I can't handle it. But I can drink tinctures. I don't feel woozy and, and all of that kind of stuff. And if I boil the tincture, the, the alcohol evaporates. Mm. And the thing about alcohol is it has a way of pulling out some of those constituents yeah. that is needed. Sometimes alcohol doesn't work. You need water. Some herbs, only water can pull out certain constituents. Mm. 
Okay. Because water can pull out minerals, but alcohol cannot. There's okay. something. Okay, maybe that's what alcohol. he meant. Okay, maybe that's what he meant. Mm. Maybe in the context of of pulling the minerals from the actual herb. Yeah, alcohol water won't do does that, that, but alcohol can pull out some constituents. Yeah, that especially water the fat soluble stuff. Apparently, that's what I read one time. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes I mix both together. Okay, I put half water, half alcohol, and and, okay. and alcohol also acts like a preservative because if you have a tincture, that tincture with alcohol can last you up to five years. Okay, and it's absolutely fine, um, but. Some people can't, some herbs are so bitter, you have to have a tincture like this. This is the tincture that I make. Okay. And this is for hormone balance. So all you do, you just open it, take a dropper full like that, and I'll just pop it in the mouth. But all, what you do, when you put it in your mouth, you hold it there for a few minutes. Okay. And you just move it around and then you swallow it. Then it's out of the way. It's so disgusting that you can quickly have a drink afterwards. But if I was to give somebody a whole mug of tea to drink of that, they wouldn't drink it. Yeah, they wouldn't drink it, for sure, for sure. And it will waste. They won't get well. They'll waste their money. So therefore, I will make a tincture. Yeah. And that's all they need to do. Drop it in their mouth. Maybe three times a day, four times a day. And okay, brilliant. it's so powerful, brilliant. it will go immediately. Because I can feel that tincture right now. I can feel it running down. Okay. I can feel it because it's got heat in it because the herbs mm. have temperature. Mm. So I can feel the heat from the herbs. I can feel what they're doing. They're going down into my stomach. Brilliant. That's even, it yeah. goes to, to, to my other question about, I remember you talking about hot and cold bodies. That blew my mind. <laughs> Talk to me about hot and cold bodies because I'm still thinking about that conversation. Okay. And I'm just like, what is a hot and cold body when it comes to herbalism? <laughs> What is that? And I'm like, do I have a hot and cold body? Now I'm thinking about it. So I'm just like, please, that that was mind blowing. So people that know me very well know I'm, I'm a nerd for science. So the hot yeah. and cold body thing about how herbs work yeah. is a phenomenal piece of information that I want to share with people. So okay. talk to me about that. All right. So what, what happens is um, you asked me a question before when we were talking previously that, yeah. you know, and I said to you, sometimes the herbs don't work. Mm. And you just went, oh, you just it exploded, right? Mm. And you were like, what? <laughs> Sometimes the herbs don't work. Right. Now, we've got, in the herbal community, we've got allopathic herbalists who act exactly the same way as the medical society. What I mean by that is this. Yes. They will say, take Moringa. Moringa's good for uh, um, iron. Take... Um, oh, those, those uh, are the herbalists I've been meeting. Yeah, take yeah. That's the herbalists I've been meeting. Guinea henweed is good for, you know, blood. Take burdock or take whatever. It's good for this. It's good for that. Now, mm. I wasn't trained to be a good for allopathic herbalist. Ah. I'm trained as a vitalist herbalist. And vitalist means we deal with the whole vital um, um, organisms, yeah. organ states, tissues of the person. Okay. That's how I've been trained. I've okay. been trained to dive deep and to get to the root cause and pull it out. I haven't been trained to deal with symptoms. I can mm. deal with symptoms. Mm. If the person's in extreme pain and agitation, I have to. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I Just to ease to. up their pain, for sure. And then I will find out what the root cause is and I will go to that root cause. I will eradicate it, pull it out with the herbs. And once the root cause is gone, symptoms are gone. Now, herbs don't work sometimes because there are two, there are more than two body constitutions. There's, there's others, but the yeah. hot and cold, yeah. you're either a hot constitution or a cold, and that's something that you're born with. And the constitution basically is talking about the body's metabolism and the functioning of the organs. Right, right. Now, you've got a hot person or yang, because I was also trained um, By a the little Chinese, bit medicine. Chinese medicine. Yeah, for sure. So we've got hot yang person. The hot yang person, they cannot handle high temperatures of heat. Um, they feel hot. They they get easily annoyed sometimes if right. the heat is getting too much. Okay. Um, sometimes they might suffer with a bit of insomnia, and they prefer cold drinks all the time over hot. Mm. Now, a cold constitution person is a yin person, mm -hmm. and that person is the opposite. They cannot handle. Um, they're very sensitive to cold temperatures. They yeah. don't like anything cold. They don't like the wind. You know, they're, they're very sensitive to the, oh, to the, okay. to the temperatures well, in that I'm, way. I'm a, I'm a warm body then. You're a warm body. And they will always grab... Actually, I'm a cold warm. body, actually, because I'm sensitive to cold. 
I love heat to the point where it pisses off everyone around me. They're like, bro, why do you have that heat on that freaking two, bro? Now they are hot constitutions. Okay. Now they are hot. I'm a cold constitution now. Okay. When my daughter comes into my bedroom, mm. she's like, oh, mom, it's like a jungle in here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like. Oh, yeah, I'm a to cold me, constitution. Okay, got it, got it. To me, it's warm. To her, it's blazing inferno because my daughter is a hot constitution. Right. Okay. I'm a cold I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. And it's a bit more complicated than that. I'm just trying of course, to this is the basic kind of yeah. outlining of yeah. what we're and talking you, about. You so really can't change that. that. You're born that. Your metabolism is that way. It that's is what it is. That's what it is. So let's say, for instance, now, somebody comes to me and they've got a painful stomach, real bad gastritis or whatever it is that's going on in their belly, acid reflux. And I go and give that person, not knowing them, I'm, a, I'm an allopathic herbalist now. Oh, you've got a tummy ache? Peppermint will do that. I give that person peppermint. That person comes back and says, it's, it's made it worse. It's made yeah. it worse. I'm even more sicker than before. I thought you said it was going to work. Right. I'm scratching my head thinking, but hold on. Peppermint is good for tummy ache. Yeah. Why isn't the peppermint working? Working, yeah. Then I give you another herb, right? I might give you another herb like chamomile. All right, take chamomile. Makes it even worse. The person's getting worse now. And I'm getting a bit worried. I'm like, oh my God, I thought chamomile mm -hmm. was good for right. tummy aches, that it would relax you. Yeah, yeah. Right? So when I step back into my vitalist herbalist um, position, I will now sit that person down, take out my, my form, book them in for a consultation. Um, if the tummy ache isn't like acute, if it's a chronic tummy ache, like gastritis or whatever, and it's, it is chronic, it's been happening... Um, over a period of time and it flares up and it goes away and it flares up, up and it goes yep, away. Yep. so they come to me now I up we, we fill out the form I have to find the constitution of the person because yeah. if I don't if that person with a tummy ache is a cold constitution yeah. remember they have a sensitivity to cold yeah and I give them peppermint peppermint yeah, is work. cold that makes sense because peppermint makes me blow it and hurts my stomach. <laughs> so I know that for that. Even makes sense. mint. I can't right? deal with mint and all that with airwaves and it's They're just cold. overpowering for me. So it makes sense. I'm a cold constitution in that sense. Right. So it they don't work. Cold. People say take peppermint for your belly. Ache. Bro, when I do oh. it, my belly goes on fire. So I just no. stay away from no. peppermint. In so you altogether. follow? You follow yep. that analogy? The person yep. is already a cold constitution and I'm going to give them a cold herb. Yeah, it They're going to get colder. Their belly's going to hurt even yeah, more. It's just going to make things worse. Yeah. I totally get it. So yeah. I will ask a range of questions <laughs> that might not make sense to the person, but it makes absolute sense to me. Then yeah. I'll hear, okay, cold constitution. I will go and get cayenne, ginger, cardamom, cinnamon, fennel, any one of those. Mm. And when I give that to that person their tummy ache will go away because a cold person, in order to deal with what's going on inside their body, you need to give them the opposite. You're never okay. going to know a person's constitution if you don't have a consultation. I can't tell what your constitution if you just the come up to me yeah, there's no and say, oh, yeah, you're a herbalist. Oh, yeah, what's, so what, I've got this going on with me. So what can I take? I'm very wary to do that. To give, oh, I get that know, all the time. Joe, what can I eat for my left I'm lung? And I'm like, I'm bro, not giving shotgun nothing. herbs. <laughs> yeah, it's like not, that. It don't work that way. No, we need to sit no. down, figure out exactly yes. what's wrong. I need to get find to that identify, out. yes. Absolutely. On top of that, on top of the constitution of the person, I need to know their tissue state. Mm. Tissue state is important. There are six different tissue states. I'm only going to give you two. There's a relaxed and there is a tense tissue state. Now, the relaxed tissue state are people who people might call um, highly strung people. They're easily annoyed. You know, everything bothers them. Their body's mm. always aching and mm. um, their pains are very sharp and throbbing and um, right, an right, angry right. kind of pain. That person is likely to have a very tense um, tissue state. Right, right. Now, a relaxed tissue state, which is the opposite, is a person who um they won't have their muscles will be very soft and boggy like they, their body will be very um <coughs> like it's got no tone it, 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 it it's kind of loose and flabby it's got no tone and a person who's got bladder issues someone yeah. who can't hold their bladder we say that the bladder is relaxed it's it's lost its tone it's flabby okay it's, cool it's, so, because the bladder's a, a bag, right? Yeah, yeah. And it sure. holds the urine. So, if, you're hold, if you've got something that's supposed to be tight and taunt and holding in the water, 
but it's all fluidy and it's all loose and it's all floppy. You're going to be constantly losing fluids left, right and center. So I also have to know by asking various questions, what is this person's tissue state? Because okay. if I give a relaxed person relaxed herbs, it's gonna they're going to get more relaxed. To... <laughs> they're going to be wetting themselves walking down the road. Yeah, for sure. What they won't be able to hold. They'll have to wear an incontinence pad. Yeah, for sure. But if I give them astringent herbs, which puckers and tightens up the, the, the skin because of all the tannins, mm -hmm. and it, it does that effect. Okay. It's really like a tight effect. I have to give the relaxed person for their bladder issue astringents, but certain astringents, because right. an astringent can be a circulatory astringent or it can be a, a very cool astringent. So I have to know which one to give them. So really my, my role as a herbalist is very important to me and it's very, um, it has an element of responsibility because I can't just say to you, oh, take that herb. Yeah, no, you can't do that. And you know, work, you're upset now. Not for an issue, not for a serious yeah. issue. I can't, I have to sit with you and you have to be with me and have a consultation. Absolutely. You have to go through this. I need to know what it is about your body state, your constitution, your tissue states. I need to know the energetics. I need to know the actions. I need to know everything. Then I can, I've been trained to match the herb with the person. That's okay. what I've been trained to do. So right. through the consultation, I will know a good match for you. Four people can have a cold. Mm -hmm. All of them will have a cold for a different reason. One person Absolutely. might have a cold because they're eating something that their body doesn't like, that they're allergic to. So they get mm -hmm. this runny nose and this pain. Another person can have a cold because, yeah, they've got the, they've got the virus or the bacteria. Mm -hmm. Another person could have a cold because there's something going on in their body that's yeah, sure. giving the symptoms of a cold, but it might not be a cold. For sure. So everybody can have a cold, but nobody is going to have a cold like you or me. Okay. So I can't give the same cold herbs or the cold remedy herbs to those four people. I can't do it because that's I could true. get it wrong. And that's sure. when the herbs don't work. If you don't understand the herbs to such a degree, you could get it very wrong. Mm. And that's when they don't work because you have to, you can't just go on a course for a month and become a herbalist because <laughs> no, you definitely you've got to be can't. careful because licorice people got this licorice herb and they think yeah great it's sweet it sweetens all the other herbs it makes it palatable for me to drink but if you're giving it to a person who's got high blood pressure they're in danger because um licorice lowers blood pressure it affects blood pressure sorry so you have to be very careful who you give certain herbs to you've got the herb wild lettuce wild lettuce I've got it in my notes here. Where am I? Yeah, wild lettuce. Wild lettuce used to be called lettuce opium. Okay. It has an opium effect. Um, it's got the, you know, ibuprofen? Yep. So if I'm giving you wild lettuce for pain, you can't take ibuprofen. You would have an overdose. It comes from wild lettuce. Okay, ibuprofen comes from wild lettuce. Ibuprofen, aspirin comes from willow bark. Ooh. The salicylic acid. So if I give you wild um, um, willow bark, you can't take aspirin. If you're allergic to aspirin, I have to know that before I give you wild willow bark. Okay. So wild lettuce is a sedative. It's a, it's a hypnotic. It's got okay. all those chemical components like um, the alkaloids, the lactocones, the, the triterpenes. It's got all of that in it. Okay. And it's good for insomnia. It works on the insomnia very well. Restlessness, overactive nerves. I often put it in my period teas for antispasmodics, for cramps. Okay. But brilliant for cramps because it's a hypnotic. So it kind of hypnotizes the nerves and lulls them and, and it brings down the edge of the pain. That is incredible. So you really have to know, you really have to know more than, you know, moringa is good for this or, yeah, you know, guinea hen weed is good for that, this. dandelion's good for this. Ah. Because some people can be allergic. I'm allergic to dandelion. I can't take it. Oh, for real? I didn't even know that. Yeah, some people can be allergic to certain herbs. So I have to find out so much from a consultation. And, and, and a lot of people, they struggle, um, you know, they struggle. With consultation, I don't need to sit down and talk to you. Uh, what do I need to talk to you for? And, and then they see how much the cost is and they're like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to talk to her. Uh, I don't need to talk to her. I can just go and get this and I can just go and get that. But because some people, I say, don't respect the herbs. 
That's true. You've got to respect the whole no, you've constitution got, of the herb and the, the herb person the and medicine. see which one goes together to get the best result. Um, that's, yeah. that's so powerful. I think people need to understand, like, herbs are not just simple as in just take this, take that. No. You know, like you said, allopathic herbalists where just take this yeah. is good for this. And I think well, that's what I've meant. I, think I I've took met a herb, a right, Joe? I took a herb, yeah. a mixture, mixture of herbs. And I took it and I took too much and it knocked me out. Wow. I remember coming down the stairs. After that, I don't remember anything. I woke up at my front door. Wow. I was scared as hell. And I nearly broke my coccyx because I fell, hit my wow. coccyx, which is my lower back, went to my chiropractor. And he said to me, you could have broken it. Wow. Because I just fell off the stairs. All I remember is coming down the stairs and bam, I was up. So I was like, see, because I, I took too much of something. It was my fault. That was not part of your constitution. No. <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. It wasn't part of your constitution, mate. Uh, you and also, for anybody who watched, not Lord of the Rings, what's the other one? Um, uh, Harry Potter. No, no, no. The one, oh, not, not Lord of the Rings. The other one that everybody watches. Um, is it, um, there's Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. There's... The one with the dragon and the white haired queen. Oh, uh, is it, that's not male, male, magnificent, magnificent, or something no. like that. No, not Snow magnificent. Queen, no, Snow, Snow, Snow White, is it? No, they've got, a, she's got a dragon in it. Look, whoever's listening, they'll know what I'm talking about. I can't remember the name. It's not Lord of the Rings, but there's a woman that in there with a queen. She's got white hair. She has a dragon and everything. In that particular uh, movie, uh, a woman was slighted by a man. Uh, she gave birth to a, 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 a handicapped baby and the man wanted to take the baby and kill it. So before the man had a chance to do that, she went into the woods, got a particular herb, gave it to the man in his dinner or his drink. By morning, he was dead. Yeah, you can present people with herbs. They've been doing that so, since the medieval times anyway. Yeah, That's don't mess happening. with herbs. Yeah, herbs don't mess with are them. serious. And there's certain herbs that you can't mix together. So I have to learn what herbs can mix together and what herbs can't mix together. So I have to be learning that as well. So this is a never ending journey for me. I'm always going to be learning. That is incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. There's so much information that you've given to, to, to us today that I'm like, yo, this is powerful for the people, for the community, for them to understand how to be responsible when approaching herbs because there is a real life danger to them. Yes. Um, understanding yes. your constitution, get a consultation more than anything. Yes. Talk to a professional. Yes. And where can people find you if they want to get a consultation from you? Where, where can they find you? If they want to find me to book a consultation, go onto my website. My website is herbalistinthehood.co.uk. Oh, really? Now it's going to froze. Okay. Yeah, there we go. go the Sorry, say that again. Right. It froze. It froze. Say that again. Uh, herbalist, mm -hmm. www. Mm -hmm. Herbalistinthehood.co.uk. That's what's and up. That's they can what's go up. to book online and then you see all the, the different consultations that I do. And you just book once once payment's made, that's it. It'll book the appointment for you or come to me. I book you in. And then when the appointment comes, it's you know, we go through the whole structure because I'll send you out a form to fill in because I need yep. to know what's going on inside of you. And um, yeah. That's I'll it. put the link as well for guys. When you see this video, there will be a link at the bottom of the YouTube directly to her website so you can go book a consultation. I've used her services. I understand that knowing your constitution can make you pick the right type of herbs. Mm. So, you know, what I've learned from this is that instead of just picking, plucking a herb off the shelf, it's better for me to talk to a professional to give me a breakdown and really let me know what's going to be the most yeah. effective herb for me. Yeah. So, um, And I'd I, like my clients to know what's yes, going sure. on in their body. I will break it all down. You did say something about Dr. Sebi was saying that you mustn't use dried herbs, you must use fresh. Oh, we're gonna talk about that in the live. That's what that, I'm oh, saying. Okay, I'm, I'm keeping okay. that. Oh, I, I have something for that. <laughs> Do I've not forget something. it. When we jump on the live, I am. I definitely got something, Doctor. I've got it in my notes here for you because for me, it's been a learning curve. I appreciate you, Jen. Thank you so much for You're your welcome. time. It's it's been the Joe Dash Effect podcast. Do you know what? I'm I'm definitely gonna surprise you guys with a part two of this because I am loving the the, the learning right now. I love it because. Understand your understanding your body from different angles is such a powerful thing. Like I may understand it through the lens of melanin, but to understand how the, the, the nature's melanin is working because that's really what's going on. You know what I mean? Because when the plant doesn't have no melanin, it dies. So 
it's it's just to me i'm seeing more and listening to more than what the average person is listening to i'm like oh hold on a minute i've got a whole section on my book for this because mm-hmm. i need to be able to explain to people how to have a better relationship with nature but yeah. to understand nature nature has a language medicinally you yeah. know what i mean and that comes to understanding your constitution understanding what works for you understanding yeah. it's not a quick fix situation so not a one size fits all. it's not it's definitely not it is a real bespoke situation so for people that want to know more follow her on instagram at red root remedies um and it's also red, it's website. red underscore root underscore remedies so it's red underscore root, root underscore, underscore remedies all yeah. right no problem well i'm gonna catch you on instagram i'm jumping on there right now okay. but everyone peace love and light you click the link to her website that will be below this video subscribe like tell a friend It's been Joe Dash. Much love.